Welcome to Shendra's Engineering Tutorials. It's something about a piezoelectric transducer which falls under the classification active transducers. So what is the main difference between a, a passive and an active transducer? Passive transducer, for example, is a strain gauge and it cannot perform the transduction converting one form of energy, mechanical energy into electrical energy unless and until it's a part of a Wheatstone bridge. Whereas piezoelectric transducer uh, without any Without being a part of any circuit, it itself uh, produces output voltage. So in that case, it's known as active. Piezoelectric transducer is known as an active transducer. How to support my statement? I say it's a passive active transducer. Sorry, I'm taking back word. My word. Piezoelectric transducer comes under the classification active transducers. So how to support my statement? Uh, considering the example, uh, quads is the best example for a. Uh, a piezoelectric material it's a silicon dioxide the arrangement of the atoms in the circuit the positive and negative charge in the crystal will give us a clear picture of how it acts as a piezoelectric material so considering uh, a piezo a quartz so how which is silicon dioxide sio2 silicon dioxide sio2 so how the orientation will be it's like this the positive charge is like this one here it may be the orientation of charges may be like this okay so this one and uh, this one it may it's like silicon so representing the silicon si even this is si even this is si with a positive charge these are positive charge containing positive charge on the other side it's oxide here oxide uh, change in the color here oxide it's like this it's like this it's like this oxide with the negative charges with the negative charges how the orientation is the charges it is it's a perfect hexagon under no stress it's like uh, like this one it's a perfect hexagon under no stress okay this is the uh, the arrangement of atoms in the piezoelectric material this is the charge orientation of a silicon dioxide this being the silicon okay don't get confused silicon positive charge and the oxides negative charge it's perfectly uh, hexagon at balance okay so another representation of the quartz crystal the quick the crystal may be looking like this it's a perfect hexagon projecting like uh, this it may look like this can you see the let it be the z-axis it may be the z-axis and here it's a x-axis and here it's a perfect y-axis so as far as the quartz crystal is concerned x-axis is known as a electrical axis and this one a mechanical axis and what about z-axis what's the name given to the z-axis optical axis don't forget this one z-axis is known as a optical axis so now what happens to the uh, charge how the orientation takes place when a force is applied so this is how the orientation takes place when a force is applied the charge the orientation the atom get disturbed in this manner it may be like a this and uh, it may be the orientation may be like this the hexagonal arrangement gets disturbed we have the positive here we have positive and here it's also positive and the negative charges are here these are the negative charges negative and negative right and it's no more after when a force is applied in this direction force or in this direction force uh, a longitudinal stress right um, and here uh, there is no more a hexagon after force is applied the orientation changes to this one it becomes like this so what difference can you see from here to here uh, more negative charges accumulate on this side and more positive charges accumulate on this side so it's this face is more negative when compared to this one and this face is more positive when compared to that one this is how it generates output voltage when a quartz crystal is subjected to a force external force right on the other hand uh, force in this direction here force in this direction also it takes this much it takes this much of orientation like this one the hexagonal it's no more perfect perfect hexagon it takes orientation like this one with a positive charge over here it goes up a positive charge over here and this may be the 
uh, and this one being the negative charge here it's a negative charge comes down this one being positive and negative and uh, this may be the negative negative over here and the positive may be accumulated over here positive charges this is negative negative and positive here can you see the change when the force is applied in this direction it's negative and when the force is applied in this direction that becomes positive so another important statement as far as uh, quartz crystal uh, piezoelectric transducer is concerned it's a direction sensitive uh, the voltage generated across uh, the face of the piezoelectric transducer is direction sensitive they have force in this direction can you see negative charge is accumulated completely positive charge is accumulated completely and the force in this direction here this direction when the force is in this direction this would go up uh, more positive charges would accumulate on that side and the negative charges this becomes more positive when compared to this one and this becomes more negative when compared to this one uh, voltage is a, a direction sensitive voltage right and this action is very much similar to a parallel plate capacitor yeah seriously it's very much compared it's very much equivalent to the behavior of a quartz is completely equivalent to very much similar to it has a similar properties of a parallel plate capacitor whatever uh, describing whatever equation we describe whatever equation we used to describe the parallel plate capacitor that is applicable over here also like uh, and one statement during this uh, during this discussion itself one statement comes into the picture one mathematical relation comes into the picture the charge developed is directly proportional to the force applied force how to put that in a statement charge q is directly proportional to the applied force f right we need to have a constant of proportionality q on this side f on that side is equal to some d some uh, many textbooks follow for this notation and what is this d constant of proportionality here that's a constant of proportionality and d here d is equal to q by f coulombs per newtons and the uh, units being coulombs newton inverse right it's known as a charge sensitivity of a piezoelectric transducer uh, you need to remember this statement why because uh, it won't be given D in many questions while you solve for many questions you won't be uh, given D you'll be said that the charge sensitivity of a piezoelectric material is this much so that ratio this is the ratio for a charge sensitivity so Q will be equal to D times of F uh, charge Q charge right make a note please now this is the expression for the charge developed across the face of a piezoelectric material and on the other hand uh, the action of a piezoelectric material is very much similar to a parallel plate capacitor it's a parallel plate capacitor the two parallel plate capacitors like this one the separation between the plates being some d two parallel plates now though this may be considered as a phase one and the uh, lower part may be considered as a phase two which is similar to a parallel plate capacitor and the separation between the distance between the two phases being the thickness it's like the thickness of the piezoelectric material may be the separation which may be the similar to the separation between the two parallel plates in that case whatever equations which we used to describe the properties of a parallel plate capacitor is applicable to the piezoelectric material also two deadly important equations which describes the parallel plate capacitor uh, other than this one what are those uh, even this is true like uh, capacitance c equal to charge upon voltage right and let it be output voltage of the uh, piezoelectric material if this is true even this is true v not is equal to q by c even this is true yeah and yeah and, and we are not yet done uh, yet another important equation of a capacitor that equation which is used to make use of capacitor as a best one of the best transducers in measuring force in measuring liquid levels etc it's a what is that expression c equal to a epsilon by d what is a here the plate area it may be this area okay so the plate area over here this may be this area the quartz face area and epsilon the permittivity of the material what we are using and uh, d separation between the plates in the case of a capacitor and the thickness of the material in the case of a 
piezoelectric material. So we are talking about the piezoelectric material. So let that be T. This one, the, sub, uh, the thickness of the material. In that case, guys, is this the same capacitance? Of course. Is this the same charge? Of course. So plugging those values over here for the expression for V0, what we have in the denominator, we have um, A epsilon by T that goes up T, right? And uh, Q, what we have, Q, it's a, a D. It was a constant of proportionality in our previous discussion, the previous statements. And what is F over here? Guys, is there any reason did I write this A over here and this when this side and F over here? Of course, we have, what is this? What will be this? Force per area. Guys, what is that? It's nothing but uh, uh, pressure, if I'm not wrong. So D as it is, what is that? D, it's a D as it is. And uh, no, there is a small transition over here. I guess, uh, very sorry, I guess uh, these two are constants. E epsilon being epsilon is equal to E naught into E epsilon naught, epsilon naught into epsilon naught, epsilon R. What is it? This one epsilon naught is the permittivity of a free space and epsilon R is the relative permittivity of the material we are using. The quartz, uh, the piezoelectric material may be quartz. It has some uh, relative permittivity and uh, barium titanate artificially available piezoelectric material it has got some this value so different values so that depends upon the material which we are using and so even this is constant in the sense this is constant guys uh, this is a constant right so what transformation let that be some is equal to let this ratio it's a constant so let this be a g some g notation it's a constant and uh, yeah t as it is and force per area that's a pressure so the final expression for the output voltage across the output generated from a piezoelectric material. And what is G here? It's a G, which is equal to what? Uh, G over here, it will be V0 upon TP, right? TP in this case, it's the voltage sensitivity of a piezoelectric material. This one is the charge sensitivity and this G is known as the voltage sensitivity of a piezoelectric material. Now final expression for the output voltage generated from a piezoelectric material transducer. Once again, it's an active transducer without any external source, it generates output voltage. That's the reason. So hope you understand this discussions. If you find it useful, please support me with your valuable subscription and share. Stay home, stay safe, keep smiling. Thank you so much.